In this guide, we'll go over all of the actions the Astrologian learns from level 50 to 90 in order. We'll go over how each action is meant to be used and when applicable, the recommended way to use it. In the summary, we'll go over an attack opener as well as some tips and tricks for general use of the healing toolkit. Please be aware that this guide assumes you have some preliminary knowledge as listed here. Relevant videos can be found in the description or on the top right corner. Let's start with going over any changes with Endwalker. Draw now has two charges and redraw can be used only once per draw. If you draw before combat and the cooldown finishes, you can start a fight by using three cards in quick succession, remembering to weave them between spell casts. Divination no longer uses card seals and simply does the maximum damage bonus every time. In its place, cards now instead grant astro signs. Literally the same thing, just a new purpose. Astro Dying can be used once you have three astro signs and its effect improves the more unique astro signs you have. One unique astro sign gives you a significant mana regeneration bonus. Two unique astro signs also reduces your GCD and cast time significantly. And three unique astro signs grants your damage and healing bonus. All three effects always last 15 seconds and Astrodyne has no cooldown. As such, whenever you have played three cards, you can use Astrodyne. Gravity's mana cost has been reduced to be equal to Malefic's, so using Gravity repeatedly will no longer cause any bigger mana issues than regularly attacking. Minor Arcana, the ability that spent your cards as a Lady or Lord of Crowns, has been reworked and is learned at a higher level. We will cover this at the appropriate level. Nocturnal Sect and all mechanics that interact with it are gone. Diurnal Sect is also gone, but all effects it caused have instead been made the default effect. For the Astrologians that want to go the extra mile in optimizing for their team, a new trick can be done for a much more bursty playstyle that centers around using your other damage boosting cooldowns around Divination. This is done by holding a card ready to play and waiting for two additional cards to ready such that you can play all three alongside both Divination and Astrodyne to combine all of the buffs at once. At the start of a fight, this is a no-brainer, but the idea is to intentionally line this up every two minutes. Start this super burst by late weaving light speed, then double weave play, draw and redraw as you need. In the opener, use divination after three light speed GCDs. In all other cases, try to use divination on cooldown. Once you have three astro signs from card plays, weave astrodyne and then continue playing cards if you have more. Since you will have four cards in two minutes rather than just three, this means you have one extra card to play, which you should play when Divination's cooldown is around one minute to align with one of the DPS player's minute long damage cooldowns. This also means that every two minutes you will have one more astro sign than last set until six minutes where you start back at zero. On the six minute version, where you start with Astrodyne and then play three cards, you should use the second Astrodyne just as the first one ends. This super burst is understandably very complex and your job is first and foremost to keep the group alive, so I would just suggest that you take note that this strategy exists and then when you feel more comfortable with the job, start trying to be more strategic with Astrodyne and card plays. Then this super burst style should emerge quite naturally for you as you get more experienced. Now with all that out of the way, let's finally begin. At level 54, Malefic is permanently upgraded to Malefic 2 increasing its potency slightly. Gravity is still better on two or more targets. At level 58, you learn the ability Collective Unconscious, which causes you to channel a dome around you. Everyone inside it takes less damage and is repeatedly applied a healing over time effect. The most regular way this is used is to channel it briefly to apply the heal over time effect and then cancel to cast spells again. If there is no attackable target or a big raid wide attack is incoming, it is not a bad idea to channel it until the hit lands. At level 60, you learn the ability Celestial Opposition, which is effectively an instant AoE version of Aspected Helios on a minute cooldown. This should be used before resorting to Aspected Helios and this can even be used to apply heal over time effect without having to resort to Aspected Benefic. The regeneration effect stacks with other regeneration effects, including both Aspected Helios and Aspected Benefic. The potency and short cooldown of this ability makes it worth using for large pulls even if only the tank will benefit from the healing. At level 62, you learn the ability Earthly Star. 
On a minute cooldown, this places down a circle which does nothing at first. If you press the ability again, it bursts for healing to all allies in the area and damage to all enemies. If you instead wait 10 seconds, it primes, making its potencies greater. Then, either when you press the button again, or after another 10 seconds, it bursts. The area of the earthly star is absolutely monstrous, so as long as you don't actively make an attempt to place it far away from your group, or while you are moving away, your party will usually end up in it. If you know when the boss is pulled, you can place the earthly star beforehand, so it primes earlier. The usefulness of Earthly Star as a damaging tool means you should make an effort to use it as close to on cooldown as you can. At level 64, Malefic 2 is permanently upgraded to Malefic 3. This does not change anything in your rotation. At level 68, Lightspeed's cooldown is reduced slightly. This does not change your rotation at all. In fact, because you need Lightspeed to effectively perform the Super Burst, and that has a 2 minute cooldown, the reduced cooldown of light speed is almost irrelevant. At level 70, you learn the ability Minor Arcana. On a minute cooldown, you can use this to draw a card. Just like regular draw, the cooldown begins when you draw. Also, this card is held separately from your regular card draw, so you can have one of each. The card is then played using crown play. You can either draw a lot of crowns, which when played, does a decent amount of damage in a huge radius around you. Or Lady of Crowns, which instead heals for a decent amount in a huge radius around you. Since the cooldown is a minute, you have plenty of time to decide what you wish to use the card for, so don't feel stressed to use it immediately. If you want to optimize the use, playing Lord of Crowns during Divination can give it a little extra value. At level 72, Malefic 3 and Combust 2 are permanently upgraded to Malefic 4 and Combust 3 respectively. This still does not change your rotation. At level 74, you learn the ability Celestial Intersection, which, on a 30 second cooldown, heals a target and applies a decent shield on them. The common target of this ability is the tank. Try to make sure the target benefits from both the healing and the shield to make the most of it, but also remember the cooldown is short, so you should in a combat context pretty much use it on cooldown on the tank if no one else needs it more. At level 76, you learn the ability Horoscope, which on a minute cooldown applies a buff to everyone around you. When either 10 seconds pass or you press the button, everyone affected are healed. If you heal anyone affected by Horoscope with Helios or Aspected Helios, it turns into Horoscope Helios, which lasts 30 seconds and heals for twice as much. Again, the heal is activated by pressing the button or after 30 seconds. You can use this in anticipation of damage, or even before a fight begins, you can prime the horoscope to have it at the start of the fight already prepared and ready. For large dungeon pulls, priming horoscope with expected Helios gives you some extra oomph at the start of a pull, both from the horoscope option and the healing over time from the expected Helios. At level 78, Essential Dignity gets a second charge, meaning you can more freely use it for snap healing someone in danger but do try to keep one chart for the tank in case they need it. At level 80, you learn the ability Neutral Sect, which boosts your healing potency for a while, and causes both Aspected Benefic and Aspected Helios to additionally apply shields to their targets. When you need to put out a lot of healing, this is the button to press. You can also use it preemptively to apply shields to everyone before damage comes in. Do try to make regular use of this effect though, as the cooldown is not so long that you have to keep it for only the biggest emergencies. At level 82, Malefic 4 and Gravity are upgraded to Fall Malefic and Gravity 2 respectively, and still does not change your rotation. At level 85, all of your healing spells get a potency boost. This does not change how you use them, but is a welcome boost nonetheless. At level 86, you learn the ability Exaltation, which, on a minute cooldown, reduces damage taken by the target for a little bit. Then, when the effect ends, it heals them for a large amount. The ideal time to use this is just before a tank is hit by a tank buster, although you can also use it on someone else when anticipating damage. In fact, you can even use it just for the healing, since that comes regardless. The cooldown of Exaltation should allow you to use it once for every dungeon pull, so it is definitely a good idea to use it just as the tank reaches a standstill. At level 88, 
Celestial Intersection gets a secondary charge, so you can use it more freely. Since the cooldown wasn't that long to begin with, you should be able to safely use this ability very regularly. Try to make sure it never sits on two charges, but only throw out the shield on someone that can benefit. At level 90, you learn the spell Macrocosmos. On a long 3 minute cooldown, casting this does damage in a huge radius around you to all enemies and then applies Macrocosmos to you and party members within the radius. This lasts 15 seconds. Then, the spell changes to the ability Microcosmos. While Macrocosmos is active, 50% of all damage taken is counted. When either the timer ends or the ability is pressed again, everyone is healed for a fixed amount, plus the amount counted for them. A very strange spell indeed, but the optimal way to use it is typically to use it before large amounts of raid wide damage comes. Then, either after the danger is over, or when the damage taken reaches a breaking point, the Microcosmos can be unleashed to heal back up. Now, to round off, let's start with an attack opener and attacking tips. Then we talk about some tips and tricks to make the most of your cooldowns. These tips will be mostly focused on dungeons, as raids and trials tend to have a bigger focus on dealing with each mechanic individually, and often which tool is best for when can vary for each boss encounter. Finally, we touch on stat priorities. For an opener example, Make sure you draw a card 30 seconds before the fight starts if you can. Then, up to 20 seconds before combat starts, you can place down Earthly Star. If you plan to use a Tincture, a so-called Burst Potion, then use it 3 seconds before the fight starts, and then 1.5 seconds before fighting begins, cast Fall Malefic and Late Weave Lightspeed. After this, it gets complicated. I will refer to play, draw, and redraw as card plays, as what order they come out in can vary greatly depending on your luck. After light speed, cast combust and weave two card plays. Then cast fall malefic and weave two card plays. Another fall malefic, followed by divination and one card play. Malefic again, and then you can weave two more card plays, or if you only have one card play left, late weave astrodyne. If you need neither card play, early weave minor arcana as well. This last consideration repeats until you get through all of your cards. If the minor arcana is lord of crowns, use it while your damage buffs are still active. The main idea is that divination should be used after the second fall malefic, after the battle begins, and then you play through your cards, followed by late weaving astrodyne, and then use minor arcana. After this, you simply cast Fall Malefic at every opportunity, and reapply Combust as it runs out. On two or more targets, Gravity beats Fall Malefic. On large AoE pulls, apply Combust to three or four targets while the tank is pulling to gain some damage while running. Then you can begin your Super Burst as the tank slows down reaching their destination. For the Super Burst strategy, make sure to play one card in odd minutes and save three cards to use alongside Astrodyne and Divination in even minutes. The best order is to late weave Divination alongside the first card play and late weave Astrodyne once you have three Astro signs. Now, for the healing tips section, a little spoiler warning. The footage that we'll be playing will be from one of the optional level 90 dungeons, so it will be mostly irrelevant to the main story, but some may still find this to be too spoilery. This footage will continue for the rest of the video, so if you want to avoid seeing it, you can choose to simply listen to the rest of the video, or come back later once you feel safe doing so. While the tank is pulling, apply Aspected Benefic to the tank. And if there is an opportunity, you can also apply Horoscope and Aspected Helios for even more healing. As they pull, use Celestial Intersection. This should give you time to apply Combust to as many individual targets as you can manage. If the tank needs more healing, remember Essential Dignity and consider a second Celestial Intersection. Make sure to pop Horoscope when you need it. This is also a convenient time to draw both of your cards to have them ready. When the pull comes to a stop, as the tank reaches their destination, start dishing out your cards, use Divination and Astrodynes if all these tools are available. If you can see where the tank plans to stop, you can also place Earthly Star in advance. Exaltation can also be very beneficial to apply for the initial brunt of the damage. If the amount of damage the tank is taking feels overwhelming, use Celestial Opposition and make sure to keep Aspected Benefic up. Additionally, 
As expected Helios heals more on an individual target over its duration than Benefic 2 does per cast. Covering the tank with Collective Unconscious for just a fraction of a second will also apply another heal over time effect to them. Assorted Desperate Measures Astrologian has possibly the most ludicrous last resorts among the healers. First, if you know the tank will take a huge amount of damage, use Macrocosmos beforehand so that it tracks 50% of all the damage so you can reset them back to safety when you need it. Keep in mind that Macrocosmos damage is not anything special, so never use it for damage. Second, Neutral Sect makes all of your aspected spells absurdly powerful by both boosting them by 20%, but also by adding a shield to each of them. To put it into perspective, Neutral Sect aspected Benefic, just as a bonus, applies a shield almost 10% bigger than at Locurium, instantly. And that is without even counting the healing bonus. Finally, when everything else fails, Sinistry can be applied to the tank while you repeatedly cast Benefic 2, effectively boosting its potency by 40%. Finally, regarding stat priorities. In almost every single case, item level is more important than the correct secondary stats, so always pick the gear piece with the higher item level and thus most mind on it. Next, Astrologian likes the general critical hit, direct hit, determination priority. Critical hit scales better than the competition. Direct hit scales just as well as determination for damage. However, while determination boosts healing done as well, direct hit only boosts damage. Because direct hit is never found on healer gear, it is often higher value for melding than determination if you want to maximize damage. Spell speed is a good option for astrologians. In fact, it is not a bad idea to focus heavily on spell speed. However, I must advise that you check appropriate best in slot gearing communities if you want to be super sure on this. Piety is a stat unique to healers and makes your passive mana regeneration go a little faster. Astrologians have such absurd amounts of built in mana region that this stat can be ignored. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or found something confusing, please leave a comment down below. Fun fact, to expand on the previous fun fact, astrologians also used to have abilities that allowed them to sacrifice a card to improve their next card's effect. In fact, one way to sacrifice cards was to turn them into Lord of Crowns, single target damage attack, or Lady of Crowns, single target healing. Another way depended on the card's type and could make the next card half as powerful but AoE 50% more powerful or last twice as long.